Have you ever been confused when people talk about certain medical specialties being competitive? Me too. In this video, we'll go over the official statistics and explore which are the most competitive and desired specialties. What's going on guys? Dr. Jabal, MedSchoolInsiders.com. For those of you who don't know, I graduated medical school in 2017 and matched into plastic surgery. To learn more about my story, visit my vlog channel, link in the description below. Now there is a tremendous amount of misinformation regarding which medical specialties are competitive. Everyone wants to say that their specialty is competitive, and they're not wrong. Getting into any residency is a challenging ordeal. That being said, some specialties are more competitive and harder to get into than others. I understand the pride involved, but whether or not your specialty is considered competitive does not make you a good or bad doctor. It simply says which specialties are hardest to get into. And knowing which specialties are hardest to get into can be very useful information for pre-meds and medical students. Again, all specialties are competitive, and if your specialty is ranked lower than you would like, that is not a judgment or an attack on you in any way. This is simply the data, period. And you can find links to the data in the description. First, let's cover the methodologies that I used. I gathered all data from the official source, the NRMP, or the National Resident Matching Program, over the last few years. I manually inputted all data into a spreadsheet that I've linked to in the description for you to view. There's always someone complaining about imperfect methodologies. Look, every analysis has its limitations. I urge you to view the spreadsheet and play with the data to see for yourself. Before we dive in, it's important to note that ophthalmology and urology are not included in the regular match, and therefore their data was not included in this analysis. That being said, if you look up their average step scores and match rates, it's clear that neither would have been in the top 5 anyway. I used data for US applicants only, as incorporating international medical graduates, or IMGs, would muddy the analysis. I looked beyond just the match rate, as that would be a terribly inaccurate marker of competitiveness. And now, you're probably confused. If it has a low match rate, then it must be more competitive, right? Well, not exactly. Specialties are self-selecting to a certain degree. I recently saw a video by someone who went off only the match rates, and in doing so, they suggested that general surgery and psychiatry were the third most competitive specialties. Anyone who is in medical school or residency will tell you that's definitely not the case. For example, in plastic surgery, applicants use general surgery as their backup in case they do not get into plastics. Look at it this way, if you're not a competitive applicant, you're not going to apply to something like plastic surgery or neurosurgery or dermatology. But lots of people do want to do surgery, since surgery is freaking awesome, and general surgery is the most commonly applied to. General surgery is an excellent field, it's tremendously broad, extremely diverse, and leaves options open to subspecialize after. And it's also the least competitive of the surgical specialties. Therefore, it has a very high number of applicants and a low match rate. This is not a judgment against general surgery in any way. This is just an explanation for the low match rate in general surgery. Now, in order to overcome the shortcomings of looking at match rate alone, I examined six categories of data. Average match rate, Step 1 score, Step 2 CK score, the number of publications, percentage of matriculants that were AOA, and percentage of applicants from a top 40 NIH funded medical school. AOA, or the Alpha Omega Alpha Honor Medical Society, is an honor society in medicine. What you need to know for the purposes of this analysis is that being AOA is a good indicator of being a high performing student. Obviously, it's not perfect, as some schools don't have it. For example, mine did not, and therefore I wasn't AOA despite being at the top of my class. Top 40 NIH-funded medical schools are usually more competitive, meaning students that got into these schools were, on average, stronger students. Emphasis on average. After compiling the data, I ranked each specialty in each of these six categories. This was a point-based ranking system. Each category was weighed equally, and points were awarded directly in relation to the ranking meaning there are 22 specialties, and the lowest ranking in that category would receive 1 point, and the top ranking in that category would receive 22 points. I summed up the points across each category and looked at the total points to determine which specialties were most competitive. 
And now is your chance to hedge your bets. Dermatology came in first, trailed closely by plastic surgery in second. Neurosurgery was third, followed by orthopedic surgery fourth, and then ENT in fifth. And honestly, I'm not surprised by these results. And that is a good sign. If you're a medical student or a resident, you probably aren't surprised either. But many people have heard of this road to success. Road stands for radiology, ophthalmology, anesthesiology, and dermatology. If you're surprised that the other three road specialties aren't included in the top five, don't be. Radiology, opto, and anesthesia are not nearly as competitive as the top five. Road specialties indicate those that have a great lifestyle, not necessarily those which are the most competitive. An interesting pattern that I noticed was that the top five were all very well-paying specialties. Neurosurgery and orthopedic surgery are almost always the top two best-paid specialties, regardless of the survey. Plastic surgery is also up there, but it's important to note that cosmetic practices make much more than reconstructive practices. Dermatologists don't make as much as the other top four specialties, all of which are surgical, and I mean, that makes sense. Surgeons are putting in longer hours, doing more work, and more challenging procedures, but dermatologists have an excellent lifestyle that is hard to beat. So the conclusion of all this, it's quite clear that the most competitive specialties are highly correlated with either excellent pay or an excellent lifestyle. Correlation is not causation, but I think it's safe to say that there's more than a simple correlation going on here. Exploring this finding further is a topic for another video. Was this analysis perfect? Absolutely not. But then again, every analysis has its limitations. That being said, this is the most comprehensive one that I have seen. So what do you think of the results? Are you surprised or is this more of what you were expecting? Leave a comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you are aiming for a highly competitive specialty, then check out the all new multimedia courses on medschoolinsiders.com. Each course was crafted by our team of top doctors. The pre-med roadmap will help you get accepted to a top 40 NIH medical school and the interview courses for med school and residency are hands down the most comprehensive and high yield guides on the interviews that you will find anywhere. Even better, both are constantly being updated and improved with new exclusive videos, written content, and private group mentorship access. They're on sale right now for a limited time. Link in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. If you learned something, give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. And I'll see you guys in that next one.